he career obviously cut short for the ultimate sacrifice. Is it time they do something in Canton? Doesn't Pat Tillman for what he lived for and what he died for belong, you know, in the hall of fame football, football, but not just football. Yeah. I mean, I think let's put it this way for the amount of the amount of light that's been shined on the NFL and the, the, the benefit that they've had from, all of these great players that are in the NFL hall of fame and you take Pat and you put him out there and you think, Hmm, he's so well known across all makes and models around the world and what he's done for the game. What he did for the game was only a short amount of time, but I think that, you know, I don't know. That's a really, it's a really interesting question. Would Pat want to be in the hall of fame? And he would probably say, no, I wasn't even close to as good as Ronnie Lott some of the or Ed Reed or these great safeties that are in there, but his impact on just life in general and people, if it was about impact, then hell yeah, he should be in there. And I, I heard a funny story and, and someone showed me this. Uh, there's a wall on the hall of fame where they took all the trading cards of players that are in the hall of fame and they put them out in a big mosaic and someone snuck a Pat Tillman card into that mosaic. So Pat is in the hall of fame. It's just not, his bust is not in there. There's not a big thing set up, but he, he has a card in there. And there's like Joe Montana and Brett Favre. And I can't remember exactly who else around him, but this guy showed me this and it was really cool to see, you know, somebody had had a little thought out there and said, I'm going to sneak a Pat Tillman card into this, you know, this, this whole deal and see if anybody catches me. So I don't really care if he's in the Hall of Fame or not. I don't think he would either. I don't know if his family does. Um, his legacy is going to go on no matter what. And, and and you know, for the ones that knew him when they played with him, that legacy is not so much about what he did to go sacrifice for our country. It's about his friendship, his ability to, to, to really care about the people that he loved. And that's what all of us will miss the most. Yet his influence outside of those people has been tremendous. And we'll continue to live on with, you know, things like Pat's run to inspire people to get up and run. I saw a lot of people that probably hadn't run much, but they were up and they were running. And I'm like, good for you. And even I ran and I haven't been jogging much. And it was like, you just felt that power of what Pat brings is like, hey, don't just talk a big game and say all these things. Get off your ass and go do it. If someday he does get in Canton, though, it seems like that would be emotional and something you would attend for sure. Oh, for sure. Yeah. I mean, I've, I've, I've uh, done my best to represent him, not only through interviews like this, because I, I sometimes get asked by, you know, family, close friends to to take a lot of the interviews because it, it's got to be tough to keep talking about this guy that you knew better than anybody else. And the world wants to know about and the world will use uh, in, in some, some ways, very positively. And in other ways, you know, his, his image and likeness is maybe not being respected completely like it should so I try to take that weight off of them and and speak in in his speak for the family, speak for the friends. Um, I actually stopped speaking for a while because I wasn't living up to the standards. I think Pat would have would have like said, "Hey, good job, Jake. You're doing well." He would have come and said, "Yo, dude, what what's up? What the hell are you doing, man? Check your check yourself. Look around. You know, you got you got things going. What are you doing?" So he's been inspirational every day for me. And if if there was an opportunity, if he did go to Canton. You know, hell yeah, there'd be a whole bunch of us out there, uh, you know, going to remember really a living legend that we were really tight, good, close friends with and teammates with. I just spent some time down in Arizona at the Pats run and was uh, honored to be included with my fellow teammates from teams that played with Pat, some of his most dear friends. We uh, were able to be the race marshals or whatever you want to say and shoot off the horn and get to gather together and be friends and see each other. And I think that really is what, what I miss the most is just his friendship, his, uh, his, his camaraderie, his ability to know when and when to reach out and knew the right questions to ask. And wasn't just superficial, was a pretty deep diver in most everything he did, including being a friend. So you didn't get away with just, Hey, how you doing Jake? And I'd say, Oh, I'm good. And he'd be like, he wouldn't say, Oh, okay. And move on. He'd say, it's good. Could you be better? What's up? You know, I, he just was a very good friend. Um, it's hard to imagine, you know, the pain his his family still goes through, his mother. It was really great to see her down there uh, in the event, but also heartbreaking to, to imagine the feeling she feels for the loss 
of, uh, you know, not just her son, but a remarkable human that touched on uh, a lot of people's lives, even before he went over and gave up his career to go fight for our country. He was still, a lot of people still thought very highly of Pat Tillman in, in his smaller circle. Now his circle has gotten so big and his legacy is growing and uh, we're doing what we can to keep it alive. And it's inspiring to see people show up to run the race uh, to motivate themselves to be better and, and all in the light of what Pat stood for. If you were able to talk to Pat, what would you want to say to him? You guys played together at ASU. You played together with the Cardinals. If you could have one more conversation with the great Pat Tillman, what would you want to tell him? <laughs> oh, man. You know, one, just tell him how much I love him. You know, I give him a hug and say, man, I love you. I've been so grateful to have you as a, as a friend, uh, as a teammate as an inspiration, as a tone setter, as a guy that, you know, we weren't, we, me and him both came into ASU undersized, uh, weren't really supposed to be there. Maybe we had some talent, but we just didn't quite fit the mold of the typical recruit coming to a D1 school. Yeah, we came in there without that holding us back and we we went and did some big things. And, and you know, that's why our, our kindred spirit was was uh, immediate that both of us kind of like, okay, I see you. I see you. Let's work hard. Let's get after it. Um, you know, so that'd be the first thing, just tell him how much I love, love him and was you know grateful for him to be in my life and then see where it goes. You know, <laughs> I'd love to touch on a lot of topics, how he feels about, you know, the, the current political landscape. And then also maybe talk to him a little bit about, you know, uh, natural healing, some things I've been involved with, uh, and, and also just see where, where we go. You know, we always had great conversations and sometimes it devolved into, you know, the greatest movie of all time. And then we'd have huge arguments on whether Shawshank Redemption or, you know, Fast Times at Ridgemont High was the greatest movie ever. And, and it was always fun, always engaging sometimes. And most times it was around a nice dark beer, uh, not a bunch of them, but just a beer or two. And, uh, yeah, I would love to sit down and chat with him again. Um, uh, but I think about him a lot. And I know he's inspiring a lot of people to to be better. And that's really to do better, to get up, not just talk, but go out and, and act on your words. How cool was it? You come into the league in 97. He joins you in 98. Did the team yeah. ask you? Did you have put any input in that? And how cool was that to reunite with him in the NFL? Yeah, I mean, I, I can recall times where I was like, hey, don't let this guy go. If he's a, if he's there, you should draft him. You know, he's got he's got what it takes. He's got that ability to set the tone. And and what I mean by that is it didn't matter if it was game time and now you get the real Pat. It was practice. You got the real Pat. Same as me and same as a lot of guys that were on that squad. We knew when it was time to work. And, and you know, that that's what I, I loved about Pat. So, yeah, I told them, you know, they'd had success with drafting me. So it made sense to go get the Pac-10 player, the defensive player of the year, Pat Tillman, who was, you know, the next guy coming out of ASU who was playing in the same stadium we were playing in as Cardinals. And it was great because, you know, he was – everybody loved Pat already, you know, before, like I said, before he went and, you know, went and and, and decided to fight for our country, he, he'd he made a, a very big impact on many, many people, not only fans of the game, but around that campus, people he came in touch with. He was just a very genuine person who treated people right and treated you like a human. So, you know, if, if that makes you special, you know, that's – that's wow. You know, he was very special. And – uh yeah, it was really cool having him on the team. You know, he'd be on a kickoff cover. The announcer was brilliant because if he was even near the scrum or near the pile of where the tackle was made, they'd say, number 40, Pat Tillman on the tackle, and the crowd would just go crazy. And I'd always kid him a little bit, but he 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 loved that attention. He really did enjoy it. And he ended up having a hell of a, a career, the short career he had. I mean, he he was a, a very he, – he was studious and a student of the game, and he knew it inside and out. A uh, quick story, he he went and met with Larry Marmee, our D coordinator, after he'd gotten his his defensive playbook. He took it home for about a week, came back, and he pointed out like a bunch of errors and mistypes and formational errors and things that, that they had missed in the whole like proofreading of it. Pat caught that. So he was really intelligent, really smart. Um, but it was a great addition to have him on that, that Arizona squad for sure and, and spend more time with him. 